Redskins and the Miami Dolphins on ABC's Monday Night Football. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Good matchup coming your way tonight. The 2-1 and one Miami Dolphins against the 1-2 and two Washington Redskins. Miami coming off a big game against Buffalo in Buffalo last week. A whole lot of good things came together for them. They don't need a whole lot because they were 11-5 and five a year ago. They think they can go all the way this year. And, of course, Washington is off to a 1-2 and two start. They are in trouble as they limp into tonight's game, Al. They have injuries on both sides of the line, but more importantly, they're in the Eastern Division of the NFC. Philadelphia 4 and 0, the Giants 3 and 1, Dallas 2 and 2. It's not desperation time, but they're getting close. Huge game for them. Limping in is uh, perfectly put, Frank. Mark Rippon is still hurt. They hope to have him back next week. Again, it's Carrie Conklin, the quarterback, making only his second NFL start. Ricky Sanders, their ace wide receiver, is banged up. May see only limited time tonight. Reggie Brooks starts at running back, his first ever NFL start. On the other side of the ball, Charles Mann, the soul of the defensive line, underwent knee surgery today. He's out. So is Eric Williams, another starter. But through the years, more often than not, when the Redskins are wounded, they are very dangerous because they'll pound it down your throat on the ground, throwing the occasional big play through the air, and the defense comes up very big. And that's what will have to happen tonight for them to beat the Dolphins in hostile Miami, Dan, where the, the Dolphins looked abysmal against the Jets and then last week looked sensational against Buffalo at Rich Stadium. How do you describe it? And how do you believe it's the same team, Al? And you're right. That, uh, so bad against the New York Jets, dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And then they turn right around and do the same thing to the Buffalo Bills, one of the better teams in the NFL. Now, almost every team in the league will play a game during the course of the season the way the Dolphins played against the Bills. They'll just play a flawless football game. Good football teams can do it week in and week out. And that's what the Miami Dolphins need to do to make that step up to the next level. Now, Brian Cox, our talented linebacker, took on the entire city of Buffalo last week. This week, he's kind of spared the city of Washington. We'll see if he'll take out some frustration on the Washington offense because that's the only way that Miami can win this game tonight. Washington will come at them with ball control. Miami's defense has to stop the big running attack of the Redskins. And that running attack, more important than ever in the absence of Mark Rippon. <laughs> there is Mark. A little tired for this 9 o'clock start, but it doesn't matter as long as he's ready next week. And on the other side, Keith Jackson, the great Dolphin tight end, still nursing an injured hamstring, played last week sparingly against Buffalo, but inactive tonight. Chip Low Miller to kick off for Washington. And the game underway in Miami with a deep kick off the hands of O.J. McDuffie and through the back of the end zone. And out come the Dolphins at the 20-yard line. Dan Marino has thrown more touchdown passes than anyone but Tarkenton and for more yardage than anyone but Tarkenton and Fouts. And he has Terry Kirby, the Virginia rookie, and Keith Byers, the ex-Eagle in the backfield, Fryer, the ex-Patriot, and Ingram, the ex-Giant, with Beatty, the tight end, in place of Jackson. Webb, Sims, Julenek, Dellenbach, and Heller, the interior five. And the offensive line did a great job last week in dominating the Buffalo Bills. Keith Byers lines up in the slot to the right, and Marino goes right to the air and missed Byers on his first pass intended for Terry Kirby. Defensively now for the Redskins, with Mann and Williams gone, they have Buck and Bobby Wilson starting with Tim Johnson and Shane Collins. Good news for them in terms of the linebacking. Banks, the ex-Giant, Gouvet in the middle, and Andre Collins, who's been hurt, makes his first appearance of the year. Carter is the number one draft choice in Notre Dame, and Green at the corners, Copeland and Edwards are the safeties. Carter replacing A.J. Johnson, who's been burned a lot in the first three weeks. Second and ten, Miami from the 20, operating from a split-back set. Marino, good protection, then throws too high intended for Irving Fryer, his new favorite receiver, and it will be third down and ten. Good coverage there by Daryl Green, and I would think, uh, Al and Dan, that Tom Carter, the rookie from Notre Dame, whom you mentioned a moment ago, is going to get a lot of attention tonight. Number 25, he just turned 21 years old, making his first start on Monday Night Football. And let's face it, he's from that Notre Dame program, and he played his first collegiate game when he was 17, so he's been around the big time. He'll get some action, though. Third and ten with four wide receivers and Marino in the shotgun. Redskins show blitz. 
Here they come. Dolphins pick it up. And Marino throws for a first down to Tony Martin. And he's into Redskin territory. And Green can't get him. And he'll go all the way. 80 yards. Well, Tom Carter will learn. But credit that to a great pickup of the offensive line. A full blitz by the Redskins trying to get to Marino. He had the time, made the delivery to the fastest of their wide receivers, Martin. It was man-for-man -man coverage with Carter trying to stay with Tony Martin. And Marino right on target. And McDuffie takes that Alvoid maze at the end to make sure he got the final five yards. Stojanovic to the point after. So two incompletions and an 80-yard touchdown as the Skins gamble and the Dolphins make it pay off. I'll tell you something else you saw there you don't see very often. At the end of this play, Daryl Green picks off Carter. Watch Green come across and actually gets in the way. Normally, Daryl Green makes that tackle. the Willie Galtz of the world can run away from Daryl Green. Watch his feet. Watch it hit the back of Tony Martin right there. And that sends Daryl Green down to the ground where he doesn't make the tackle. Daryl Green closed the ground on Martin in a hurry and would have made that play. A bad break for the Redskins, a good one for Miami, and they lead 7 to nothing. But over the years, whenever a receiver caught the ball in the open field, Daryl Green always chased him down. Kickoff by Stoyanovich, taken by Desmond Howard. And he is pounded down at the 19-yard line by Bernie Parmalee. And the aforementioned Darrell Green is a multiple winner of the NFL's fastest man competition. We had a very poignant shot for you, and we were away. It was Darrell Green walking over to Tom Carter, giving him a pat on the back and saying, probably, look, we've all been burned. Hold it together. Go back out there and do your job. Gary Conklin makes his second start. Played fairly well against Philadelphia in that very frustrating loss at Veterans Stadium. The game the Eagles won two weeks ago with four seconds remaining on a Cunningham to Calvin Williams pass. Here's Reggie Brooks, the Notre Dame rookie, going nowhere. Brian Cox wrapping him up, number 51. <laughs> That's the first play of the game, Brian. Uh, three hours to go. <laughs> For the Skins, Ernest Biner and Brooks begin in the backfield with Brooks the featured back. Sanders and McGee start at the White House. We'll keep an eye on Ricky with a bum shoulder. And Middleton is the tight end. Eloanibi, Brown, McKenzie, Schlereth, and Simmons up front. And, of course, the big name missing is Jim Lachey out for the season. Knee surgery. Second and nine at the 20-yard line. Middleton is in motion. Here's Brooks under the way. And Brooks, who can break one, as he did against the Eagles for 85, is tackled by Brian Cox, the first guy to hit him. Defensively now for the Dolphins. Cross, Klingbile, Webster, and Marco Coleman. The front four, and then Grimsley, the veteran offer doll in the middle, and the emerging star Cox, with Vincent and Brown at the corners, and the two Florida Gators, Jarvis Williams and Lewis Oliver, the safety. Miner is in the game on third down, third and six at the 23-yard line. Middleton in motion with three receivers to the right. Conklin looking over the middle and then throwing incomplete intended for Ernest Biner. So a frightful beginning for the Redskins who give up a touchdown in the first 30 seconds and then go three and out. Seven defensive backs for the Miami Dolphins in their nickel there. Only keep two down linemen in there. That's Cross and Webster and Cox and Coleman play the defensive ends, and they bring in seven DBs. Tough he, to throw against. Here is Reggie Roby, a most familiar figure here. Ten years with Miami. They let him go, and Washington snapped him up in a New York minute. And Roby booms one to the 25-yard line to O.J. McDuffie, and he's tackled after a two-yard run back by A.J. Johnson. And Reggie's first kick as the enemy is 53 yards. 12.41 to play in the first. 
Two minutes and 19 seconds into the game at Joe Robbie Stadium. Each team has had the ball once. The Dolphins lead 7-0 on an 80-yard Marino to Tony Martin. Touchdown pass. First and 10, Miami from the 27-yard line. Terry Kirby, big hole through the middle, and the rookie from Virginia takes it out to the 45-yard line. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Lay's Potato Chips, the proud sponsor of the opening video with Death Leopard. Bet you can't eat just one. By Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Hewlett Packard, Desk Jet, and Laser Jet Printers. 18-yard gain by Terry Kirby, third-round draft choice. And what a third-round pick he yeah. turned out to be. At the 45 yard line. Here he is again, and this time he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by about uh, five Redskins, led by Bobby Wilson and Kirk Bavea. Kirby came out of uh, Virginia, the third round pick. He was a basketball player there also, but he had 800 and some yards rushing. He caught 37 passes as a senior, and they knew he could do a lot of good things, but they had no idea that he had worked into the offense so quickly. You caught a glimpse of Mark Higgs, number 21, on the sideline. Higgs had been the starter and does figure to play quite a bit tonight as well. Second and nine. Marino guns one to Kirby. He's at the skins 30. And forced down at the 20-yard line by Carl Banks. Another Miami first down deep in Redskins territory. 34-yard game. Kirby just working over the middle. They try to take him with the linebacker. He gets into the open zone, and Marino with great protection once again. Lots of time. Picks up Kirby. They were trying to cover him with Carl Banks. Uh, Banks is good. Not that good. And there are a few linebackers that could stay with the back out of the backfield. What's got to be concerning the Redskin coaches right now is this is a defensive team that over the years just doesn't give up big plays. And in the two possessions the Dolphins have had the ball, we've just seen one big play after another. They're dispensing with the two and three yard gains and going right for the 10 or the 80. Here's Mark Higgs, his first carry of the night, and it's him three down to the 17 yard line. It'll be second and seven with 10 20 to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Dolphins. Don Chula kind of defends. Well, he doesn't defend because he doesn't defend anything, but he tells you he likes to use both Kirby and Higgs because they demand so much of that back position, the running back position. They have to be a good receiver out of the backfield, they have to be a good blocker. In case of the blitz for Marino. And they have to run the football well. So they get a lot of work and you need a couple of them, he says. Second and seven. Here is Keith Fire, the former Eagle. Picks up two. The versatile one. He can operate as a running back, a wing back, a slot back, a tight end, a wide receiver. And he's thrown five touchdown passes in his career. Out of 11 attempts. And I'll tell you what, did you notice how towards the sidelines, knowing it's a wet field, how he really shortens his steps down and starts chopping underneath him? There's a veteran player that isn't going to take that long stride, get stretched out and slip. Watch him chop down, take the little bitty steps, keep those feet underneath him where he's able to stay in bounds and keep working upfield. That's good, solid work by Keith Byers, who is in the top five most versatile backs in the NFL. Third down and four. Marino throws inside the 10, and that's going to be a first down as Mark Ingram. Oh, nice behind the back to play there. A little Michael Jordan by Ingram. His forward progress netted him the first. That's Heller and Danny Copeland shoving. Working against the nickel defense, Ingram found a little spot, and Marino doesn't need much of a spot. And a flag went down after the play. Could be an unsportsmanlike conduct call. Referee tonight is Gary Lane. Don Shula, 24th year as the Dolphins head coach, 31 years as a head coach in the National Football League. Richie Pettibone, age 55, not only his first year in the NFL, first year as a head coach, period, anyway. Foul. Unnecessary now, number 28, half the distance to goal line, Ooh. first down. Darrell Green. We don't hear that call very often. 
Carroll, one of the cleanest players in the league, and you don't normally find him uh, near the fray where these type of penalties are thrown. Here he is making the second guy in on Ingram. He's trying to go after the ball. Ingram is still fighting forward. Whoa. Uh, he's How just do you trying call to get him? the ball out of there. Maybe the whistle had blown long before that, but he was just trying to do what he should do and get the football out of there. Uh, maybe something happened after that look we just saw. I didn't see a penalty there. Uh, first and goal. Higgs. And he is tackled by Andre Collins, who hasn't played until tonight. He's been hurt. And uh, the way the Redskins defensive line is banged up, uh, he comes back at a most opportune time for Washington. Yeah, Collins hurt himself in a preseason game on the 27th of August. You see, he fights off the block of Beatty and gets in there and makes the hit. And Frank, you know what that's like coming back from an injury. The first time in real live action, you, you get in the mix and you make a play. His spirits are higher than and they've been in a long, long time. Andre Collins. Collins coming back from a knee injury. Second down and goal from the three-yard line. Marino with the fake. Marino throws. The catch is made at the goal line by Tony Martin, who scored the first touchdown and comes within inches of making it two. What did Dan Marino say in our open? If he makes the perfect throw, it doesn't matter what the coverage there's a classic case there are redskins all around the place and he has so much confidence in his ability to put the ball exactly where he wants to throw it Look, that is not bad coverage not at all yet dan the ball is right on the hip seven and a half to go in the quarter seven nothing miami third down and goal and they give it to higgs and he's in there touchdown on the first series and Pettibone's team is already down by two touchdowns. We look again the dive from about the three yard line by Higgs but the concern has got to be for Pettibone. They gave up the run. They gave up the short pass. They gave up the long pass. Well, look and at it. When a team like Miami starts to do anything and everything they want to do they can turn this game into a pinball machine. Well Higgs goes over the top and not one Redskin even left the ground to try to meet him. That's a uh, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. Point after by Pete Stoyanovich, and it's 14 to nothing. Dolphins. From LAFC East, the Oilers want to turn their season around. Buffalo hosts Houston next week on ABC's Monday Night Football. Pretty much the way the Dolphins began things a week ago in Buffalo, got off to a big early lead and dominated the Bills and tonight they've dominated the Redskins through the first half of the first quarter 721 to play in the opening period it's 14 to nothing Miami Stoyanovic to kick off Brian Mitchell the deepest of three for the Redskins on the return in Mitchell's direction from two yards in Brian gets taken down at the 18-yard line by Ronnie Williams, wearing Mark Duper's old number, the longtime receiver. Duper gone. Williams in wearing number 85. And there's a shot from high above. The Goodyear blip. Stars and stripes from Pompano Beach, right up the road. Providing the scenics on a uh, warm, humid, and very still night. And I think it's incumbent right now in Washington that they stick with what they came into this game to do even though they're down 14 zip they got to get something happening that's good for them not get desperate with a quarterback that's making his second start it's not going to be easy from the 18 yard line here's Reggie Brooks and he picks up six yards he's tackled by Brian Cox at the 24 yard line well we're, we're talking about two quarterbacks tonight there's a little disparity in their lifetime figures Carrie Conklin has thrown for a total of 403 yards in his career and Dan Marino has thrown four. where it stops <laughs> no one knows <laughs> in Alligator Alley somewhere 23 miles west for 40,306 yards and that was before tonight <laughs> yeah that's right find another alligator <laughs> or a panther 
Here's Brooks. Breaking the first tackle, but not the uh -oh. second, and dropped the uh -oh. ball. And Brooks is hurt. Brooks but grabbed his leg right after he was tackled. He uh, had a, a groin problem earlier in the week. Well, he got I, hit just as he was spinning away. I'm trying to figure out how things could go any worse for the Redskins. Mm. Here goes their most explosive running back, hobbled, hobbled and heading to the sidelines. Their number one quarterback is already on the sidelines, and Richie's hair is already gray. I'm not sure what else could happen tonight. But he's spinning right there. Contact has been made. And falls right on that right ankle. Third and seven with Brian Mitchell replacing him. And the pass is incomplete, and it wouldn't have been a first down anyway for Ricky Sanders, whose uh, participation tonight was somewhat doubtful because of a shoulder injury sustained in practice a couple of days ago. There's the hobbled Brooks. He's already gone. We've talked about Mann and Eric Williams, and the Redskins are down 14 to nothing. And Art Monk was also injured in practice this past week. Sanders with a shoulder. Monk, who had a bad knee, has a very sore ankle that he hurt in practice. Reggie Roby to kick it to the rookie O.J. McDuffie. And a flag goes down. There was some contact near the uh, sideline. Offense, number 26, part of the snap, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. And the contact was Danny Copeland trying to go across the line too early. The, the, the Redskins, this game is what now? About 20 minutes old. Wayne Severe, the offensive, uh, the special teams coach, and Richie Pettibone there. This is one of these deals where you'd like to take your team back up the tunnel and get a mulligan. Is there any way we could start this thing over? Uh, 20 minutes isn't that long. How about if we just go back and start it again? Contact oh. again this time. Right, same thing happened. Maybe they ought to go up the tunnel keep going full start oh. offense number 56 part of the snap still fourth down we have Hamilton a rookie I'll have a safety in a moment well I'll tell you Richie has a hard time living with this after the Philadelphia loss I mean he was cool and calm they played a great football game but I mean he can blow too well the reason he was cool and calm is you're right, Frank. You said it. They played a good football game. This is not. Here's Roby. Oh, Benny Roby. Fair catch is called for and made at the 44-yard line. Flag is down. It's a 45-yard kick. This flag's back at those back in the backfield. Back where Roby punted it. Hard to believe you could get three penalties trying to punt the ball once there is no infraction on the play first down Miami that's why you couldn't believe it <laughs> didn't think so yep 525 to go in the first now time for a regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology the Redskins in their uh, four games thus far this season have yet to get on track in the first quarter they've been blank the opposition has scored 33 points on the other side of the ball. Tonight, the Miami Dolphins have now outscored their opponents 44 to 7. And they're, the still, quarter. And they're still five and a half minutes left in this first quarter. And they have the ball again at their own 44-yard line. Miami 14, Washington nothing. Terry Kirby gets a block from Byers. And then gets run down by Copeland after a pickup of four after the 47 yard line. Kirby's big. He goes 6'1 and about 220 pounds. But as I said earlier, he's shown a remarkable ability to adapt to the offense so quickly. Don Shuley doesn't like rookies out there running around. And he's done a terrific job in the passing game as well as the running game. Who's winning? Hmm. You be the judge. <laughs> that that is indicative of the score. Answer in a minute. <laughs> Second and seven. Meyer. And Meyer tackled by Banks from behind, and Banks is slow in getting up. About a yard shy of the first down, and Banks is rolling around on the ground. The longtime New York Giant playing on the other side from Lawrence Taylor. 
he's headed back to the huddle. <laughs> this is a guy that if he, we're not talking about going out if you're limping, that thing's got to be dangling almost to keep Carl Banks out of a game. See what, what happened to him. Tremendous yeah. career he's had. Meanwhile, a holding call against the no man hit him. Miami Dolphins negating the game, pushing it back to the 37, making it second down and 17. Lane's mic wasn't working. I think the call was on Richmond Webb, 78. Marino over the middle to Mark Higg. He gets out to the 45-yard line, and that'll set up a third down and nine as Banks is in on the hit. Once again, no pressure whatsoever on Marino. He had all the time he would ever want. Redskins trying to do it with coverage after being burned on that blitz. Banks getting back into the action. Pretty good, pretty good closing by a guy who uh, who hurt himself the play before. Well, we talked about the pass rush. This this group here is not to be confused with Charles Mann and Dexter Manley and Dave Butts and Daryl Grant. On third and nine, he flips it to Tony Martin, who's been the main man tonight. And Martin's third reception is good for a first down of the 40-yard line. Now they've wanted to see more of Tony Martin for a long time here in Miami. He's basically now alternating with Mark Ingram as a wide receiver. He is the fastest of the Dolphin receivers. This time he does a little underneath, gets a little screen, as a matter of fact. That's nothing more than a screen to a wide receiver. That's, that's a well-drawn-up and well-executed play. Rather than flare it out to a back, throw it to a wide receiver who split all the way out and have him come back to his blocker. Well-designed play. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Under three minutes to go in the quarter. Marino going for six more, and has this one picked off at the goal line by the rookie Tom Carter, who got position on Irving Pryor. That is just what the doctor ordered for Washington. And look at the Redskin defensive backs come over and congratulate the rookie. They're all coming over to give him a, a little high five. They know how about he felt when he lost that one to Tony Martin that scored the first touchdown. He makes a superb play, the rookie from Notre Dame at the goal line. Best new show of the season coming up tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Pacific, 9 o'clock Central and Mountain Time. NYPD Blue, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, right here on ABC. The Washington Redskins, after the Tom Carter interception, the second of his brief career, have it at the 20-yard line. Reggie Brooks is back in the game, the fake. The fake end around, and Terry Conklin going deep, and he had Sanders open for a moment, but couldn't get it there. Chuck Klingbeil is the guy who pounds Conklin into the prescription athletic turf of Joe Robbie Stadium. Conklin now 0 for his first three. And the turf obviously works. Al, it uh, has if not covered. We look at Conklin once again. They, when you ask the staff, the Redskins staff about Conklin, the one thing that comes out of him first is, well, he's really tough. But when you really get down to it, they, they'll all so tell you he is as green as grass. So he can, he's as green as a four-year player can be. Here's Brooks, <laughs> nothing doing. And it looks like the entire defense rides him back, led by David Griggs. I mean, you use the word green to talk about Conklin. You're talking about his first two years in the league, he spends on injured reserve. And he has two passes to his credit before he's thrown to, into the breach here when uh, Rippon goes down. So even though uh, it says four years from Washington when you're talking about Kerry Conklin, green is the operative word, and I don't mean Daryl. Mark Rippon, by the way, tells us that he's going to start practicing on Wednesday and has an outside shot at, uh, at playing in their game next Sunday. Mark Rippon also set that, set that prescription two years on IR yeah. before he became a starter. Third and 14. Very few teams have used IR as well as the Redskins through the years. Uh -oh. And this play is over. Flag came early downfield. Larry Webster bangs into Conklin. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. Oh. Remains third down. <laughs> That's, That's a bullet. That's a shame to take a shot like that yeah. on a play that never even counted. Mm -hmm. That's a non existent play. 
And Conklin uh, gets up awful slow. Watch the shot that he takes here. Keep in mind, this play never even existed. Oh. The bruises are there. Jeff Cross comes in from the backside. Larry Webster finishes, on, finishes him off from the front. And Webster's a little ding. Third and 19. This is where you got to give your quarterback something that he's not going to get in trouble with. Give him a draw or something. I didn't think about it a little bit. Yeah, they have to get to the yeah. 30 for a first down, and, the, and th this play didn't exist either. So we have back-to-back -back phantom plays with 127 remaining. For 76, five-yard penalty. And this is not the music of the night that we were looking for. <laughs> Ed Simmons over the right tackle. Seven-year veteran. There's Rich Gannon with his back to you. He is the backup quarterback, the former Viking, so he'd be the guy if Conklin got hurt or they wanted to make a switch. And uh, they don't carry a third quarterback tonight. Brian Mitchell would be the emergency QB. Third and 24. The oh no quarterback. If they give him a draw again, that's giving up. <laughs> that's that's acknowledging that we have no hope. But you want no a third, chance. Third and 23. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Mitchell takes it out to the 13 yard line. Crowd salutes the Dolphin defense. That's, get that draw in. Oh, yeah. The win. That's, just, wow. that's just giving up on the fact that a first down in this situation is not going to happen. Not under any circumstance. So Mean Joe Green, the Dolphin assistant, his unit doing its job beautifully to this point. Final minute of the quarter, Reggie Roby's kick. Oh, Whoa. A mile high. <laughs> 52 yards taken at the 35 by O.J. McDuffie. He brings it back to the 42. Uh, he had it so high up there, the coverage arrived with the ball. Always. An artistic beauty. Watch, watch the extension on the follow-through with Roby. Watch how high his right foot ends up. That he must not have a hamstring to be able to do that. And like uh, unlike other kickers, he does not come off the turf with that left foot. It's just all with the yeah. leg to follow through. It's beautiful to watch. That was 52 yards long. It very well might have been 52 yards high as well. A perfect arch. He had been hurt in the last couple of years, and then they brought Dale Hatcher in, and Hatcher won the job. And among other things, Roby was having financial problems, which led to a bankruptcy filing, and that figured into the Dolphin release as well. As Higgs, for no gain, takes it up to the 42. Just briefly, the Dolphins felt yeah, that... Before people think that you're being hard on him. Exactly. <laughs> the, the Dolphins thought there was a possibility that had he filed for bankruptcy, which he did, he could have been declared a free agent since bankruptcy court laws would obviously supersede anything the NFL would have written into any laws. But Washington said, we'll take our chances. And they signed them in a second. End of the quarter, 14 nothing, Miami. And back we come with the second quarter after this commercial message and a word from ABC. Downtown Miami in the distance. Uh, that's about a half hour drive from here. On the left is the International Place, adorned in the colors of the Miami Dolphins on this warm South Florida night, where the first quarter has belonged to the Dolphins. On second and 11, we start the second period. Miami on top, 14 zip. And Moreno guns one incomplete, intended for Greg Beatty. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Week five of Monday Night Football from Miami, our first of two visits to Joe Robbie. We'll be back here in December when the Dolphins take on Pittsburgh, and the numbers through the first quarter certainly indicate uh, the dominance of the Dolphins. It's just a recreation of what they did last week against Buffalo. They had 191 yards against the Bills in the first quarter last week up at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, and this is a... Uh, Strong back-to-back -back performances by the Fish. Third and 11. They've converted all four of their third down plays tonight. Oh, make it 5 of 5 as the catch is made for a first down by O.J. McDuffie, the rookie. He's tackled by Brad Edwards. McDuffie, their top draft choice. He's a good receiver, but uh, in effect, they drafted him because of his run-back abilities on kickoffs and punts. 
watch Marino step up into a perfectly formed pocket and just drill this in between two defenders to McDuffie. I mean, this is classical. Marino totally oblivious to what's happening around him. A super offensive line. He knows he's going to get the protection. Steps right up into the pocket and delivers. Yeah, that type of a hit from Edwards brings the ball out more often than not. Nice job by McDuffie. At the 44-yard line, Marino. That's incomplete. Byers looks, <laughs> does a 360 and still doesn't see a flag. <laughs> well, he did a 360 because of Carl Banks. Banks just levels him while the ball's in the air. I, that is a little surprising that there's no flag. Well, Banks was playing the ball, I think, is what he would maintain. <laughs> right through his, Byers' head. Well, that's what he would maintain. Watch Carl Banks here. He's kind of looking for the ball, isn't he? Just a little. <laughs> Well, that's every now and then you just kind of get away with one. Now, granted, the ball was not thrown all that close to Keith Byers, but. <laughs> On second and ten, here's Higgs, and he gets tackled at the line of scrimmage by Govea. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, and by Bud Drive, a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Why ask why? A few people are asking why in regard to the Redskin defense. You know, we're talking about offensively their problems, and a lot of it has to do, of course, with Rippon being out. But defensively, all of a sudden, they're really leaking oil. Not Injury. just tonight. Injuries, of course, but they gave up 360 yards passing to Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago. That should have sounded a major alarm. And it did in a lot of areas. Third and nine. Marino, you think he's got enough time? Oh, come on. And you get that much time, that's going to be the result. It's Martin's fourth catch. There's a flag down. He takes it to the 11. There's a marker at the 40. And the Dolphin offensive line is going nowhere, which gives you the indication that they think it's some sort of a penalty on the offensive team, and that's what it is, an eligible receiver downfield. Heck, some of the linemen might have thought the play was over. Marino was back there for so long. <laughs> They must have assumed that he'd already thrown an incomplete yeah. pass. They have honestly not come close to Whoa. getting Down Marino tonight. Receiver, number 69 on the offense, downfield. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. He's going downfield, I mean, <laughs> that's he really thing. has nowhere to go. He must, have, uh, he must have lost track of his guy and decided he'd go help. <laughs> what, catch it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him. <laughs> Maybe he was hustling down or trying to hit somebody, Frank. <laughs> Some of those guys do on occasion. But you are right. That, that, even though it comes back, does not bode well for Washington, their inability to pressure Marino. Third and 14 at the 49-yard line out of the gun. Skin brush only three. And Marino throws, and it's incomplete at the 21-yard line. The intended receiver was Tony Martin, and Tom Carter is there with the coverage. The Redskins at time elected only come with three and they still flushed Marino out of the pocket. That was good work by only a three man pressure line up front. But again he tests Carter and Carter was up to it. Carter read that pretty good yep. though. I mean he didn't come up when Marino got flushed out of the pocket because very heady of him because he knows Marino's not going to run that football. He stayed right with the receiver. Here's Dale Hatcher who won the job from Reggie Roby. His first punt of the night is a touchback. Too good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, but it'll come out to the 20. Right, 48 gross, but 28 net. Skins get it at the 20, 12.30 to go in the half. Miami's 14, and Washington, nothing. At the risk of overstating the importance of an early season game with Philly 4-0 and the Giants 3-1 and, and Dallas, of course, in the division, this is a very important game for the Redskins, and uh, if they lose tonight, one up, three down, and three in a row after that Big win on opening night against Dallas. I don't think that's lost on them either. Uh, they're just playing a very uh, hot team, if you will, coming out of Buffalo with a great game. But they got to go back to what they came to play with. Go back, establish the run, try to get some turnovers. Most of everything, you got to get a little pressure on Marino. They start with a pass here, and that's one hop by Sanders. Incomplete second down. And it's not the type of start by Kerry Conklin that, that they were looking for. Just take that last pass right there to Ricky Sanders. It's a one hopper. It's his chance to shine. It's his chance to prove that the years the Redskins have invested in Conklin, that they were a worthwhile investment. And, that, and, and he's got to parlay that into some sort of success on the football field. Are those 
now are, are the questions going to be raised were those wasted years second down and ten and Conklin's pass was into the hands of Ernest Biner, but Jarvis Williams dislodged it and sends Biner down. I think we're going to have roughing uh, passer against Conklin. Conklin took a tremendous shot. Mm -hmm. And Biner and did as well. Threw an instant run. flag. Jarvis Williams puts a major league hit. Well oh, within minor. the rules. And they're going to. First down. And there is coming in from the back side. He's oh, thrown he to the ground by Marco Coleman. And that will bring the flag every time. That's that. that, that you got to understand the man responsible for protecting the quarterback is standing about 18 inches away, Marco. The referee, it is his sole responsibility to watch out for the welfare of that quarterback. But Biner was slow getting up after that play also. Yeah. Whatever you say about their vision, they're not that far away. That's Washington's first first down of the game, and it took a penalty to get it. Conklin is 0 for 4, and he's now 1 for 5. His first completion of the night is to Brian Mitchell, who gets it out to the 46, and that's enough for a first down. Brian Mitchell can do a lot of things. He was slated to be the number one back until all of a sudden Reggie Brooks just kept getting better in training camp, and we saw Brian put in a hell of a performance up in Minnesota in the playoff game one of the great shows we've ever seen running back kicks catching the ball over 200 yards total offense but all of a sudden Reggie Brooks came in and just displaced him as the key man the featured man as Richie likes to say first and ten of the 47 11 40 to go in the half 14 to nothing Miami Brooks and he gets Wrapped up by Mike Golick first. The Mike Golick, the uh, longtime veteran, uh, last with the Eagles. His brother Bob just retired after uh, finishing his career with the Raiders last year. And Golick uh, filling a spot along the defensive front for Don Shula. I think Mike, uh, when he came to Miami, thought that uh, he was going to be a starter and that he was going to really get a lot more opportunity to play than he has at this time. But this is a bear down kind of guy. This is this is a guy who comes to work every day, brings his lunchbox, and over the course of a season, he'll contribute on a lot of occasions. That was one of them right there. Second and 11 at the 46. Brooks again. He takes it to the 49 of Miami. Big Philadelphia influence here with the Keith Jackson, of course, and Byers, and we talked about Golick. And uh, I'll give you a report on Cunningham in a moment. Houston Buffalo, that's our matchup next Monday. And uh, well, you all know what happened the last time they met in the playoffs last year. Houston watched the 32 point lead evaporate. Bills with the greatest comeback in the history of the National Football League to advance in the playoffs. They did it again last night against the Giants. They didn't look like they were never going to win that game. All of a sudden, one final drive, and they won the football game. Third and six. Conklin pass, and that is caught by Sanders, who makes a great move to pick up the first down and a lot more. And this is exactly what the Redskins needed, to be able to move the ball on the ground, get the little pass out in the flat, get it to Gary's Ricky Sanders, give the quarterback a little confidence. They protect him well. Step back into the pocket. And Bessie Jackson laying way off Sanders who again, as Al mentioned earlier, came in here tonight as a question mark with a very sore mm -hmm. shoulder. He had collided with Desmond Howard in practice. They didn't know whether he'd play or not. He almost got the impression talking to Richie last night that he wasn't going to play, that he was hurt that badly. First down at the 32-yard line. Here's Conklin again. Swings one out to Biner. He picks up about seven. Started in on Cunningham. Randall, as you know, yesterday, a fractured left fibula. He was flying to Los Angeles today to get a second opinion. They say that surgery is likely. And here was the injury. Here's how he was hurt yesterday in the game with the Meadowlands against the Jets. He will probably be out if they have to undergo surgery or if they do the surgery on the broken left fibula, eight to ten weeks. Fred Barnett with uh, a torn up right knee is out at least three months. Jeff Seidner is also hurt, and the Eagles have agreed to terms with Ken O'Brien to back up Bubby Brister at quarterback as Brooks takes the ball to the 19-yard line for a first down. And yet the Eagles, under Rich Kotite, 
what people are now beginning to understand is a pretty terrific coach or 4 and 0. Yes. Mark Griffin will really push himself to try to get back and boy you, you see the awkward angle that his foot is bent back underneath and it's no surprise at all that that resulted in a broken bone. First and 10 at the 19 yard line. And that pass is in no man's land. Apparently intended for Jim Riggs, but closest of all was Lewis Oliver. Second and 10. So it's been a good drive to this point for the Washington Redskins. Conklin's been sharp. He's been delivering the ball. Appears to be throwing with a little more confidence, a little more zip on the ball. And this is a drive where, one, they're accustomed to scoring down here. Seven out of nine is nothing short of outstanding. And they desperately need to make it eight out of ten. That trailing 14 nothing. That's the best rate in the NFL this season. Conklin floats one to Tim McGee. That's his first catch. The longtime Bengal picked up by the Redskins in effect to take the spot occupied by Gary Clark, who chose the free agency route to Phoenix. Interesting, isn't it? As you look at these two teams, the two marks are gone. Duper and Clayton from Miami. Gary Clark is missing from the Washington Redskins. Interesting offseason. Third down and six. 8.01 to go. First half. 14 nothing Miami. That's Monk slot right. And Conklin throws. And the catch is made at the 11 yard line well shy of the first down Tim McGee the receiver and on comes Low Miller to try to put three on the board played very well by Bessie Jackson he was taking the first down yardage away from Tim McGee and he did a good job of it McGee with a little slam in had to break to the outside Conklin delivered it but Bessie was right there with the ball it's a typical pass though where people sit at home and scratch their heads and go why do you why do you complete a two-yard pass uh, when you need five? This is a 28-yard attempt by Low Miller out of the hole of Pat Eilers, who replaces Rippin as the holder. And that puts Washington on the board. 7-11 to go in the first half. It's now Miami 14 and Washington 3. Joe Robbie Stadium, a lot of usage in uh, this year, 1993, of course. And in fact, yesterday the New York Mets beat the Florida Marlins right here. Closing day of the baseball season. Five yard line to kick him down into the arms of Mike Williams. And he breaks it all the way back to the 37 and then loses the football out of bounds. It's uh, it's weird seeing Joe Robbie Stadium and its baseball configuration here with dirt on the uh, on the playing field from the on our left side there from the 50 on in. Ball That's the first time forward, out we've of ever bounds, seen it here. To the spot of the fumble. First down. Fortunately for the Dolphins, this ball goes out of bounds before anyone in a Redskin uniform has a chance to make a play on it. But nonetheless, a good return and good field position. Explosion of uh, sports here in South Florida. We got they've got a hockey team that's uh, getting ready to drop the puck on the ice here. What the Panthers? The Pan this is Sports Seven. Now. Yeah. The Panthers open up in, in Chicago against the Blackhawks Wednesday. The Heat, the Dolphins, the Marlins. Year-round horse racing, dog racing, high lie golf. First and 10 from the 37. Baseball in Canada and hockey in Florida. All things are possible. <laughs> Herbie up to the 44-yard line. They got some kind of fans down here. We were sold out here tonight in the Marlins. What they down? Now drew three, three million people. Three million people, which is uh, terrific. Of course, uh, the, the fans what in Denver. What do we got? Seven million people? That. Seven yeah. million people between the two expansion friends. Yep, over four million. A new record, of course, for the Colorado Rockies. But uh, baseball picked the, uh, the two right areas. To expand. Clearly. Second and three at the 44 yard line. Kirby exploits the hole and takes it down to the Richmond 42 yard line. First down. Okay, that's just fine running by the rookie out of Virginia. That play designed to come over the left side, over the six hole, or whatever you want to call it. He takes it back to the inside. Little short, choppy steps. Take a look at this. This was designed to go right over. Afadal, 
who plugged the hole. He broke it back to the right and gets the first down inside the 45. What a spectacular rookie he has been. Good runner and a super receiver out of the backfield. At the 44-yard line, Moreno going deep and too deep. Intended for Irving Fryer, the uh, longtime former Patriot. Carter, just about as good as you're going to do against Fryer. Marino almost throwing this ball perfectly. He might have even stepped on his foot as Fryer lunges for the ball. Is there a little collision there? Mm. I'll say that's well played by the rookie from Notre Dame, Carter. The Redskins, each and every one of them that plays on their defensive team, are going to have to elevate their play a little bit. This is not the defensive team that took the field for the Redskins in 92. It's nowhere close. Second and 10 at the 44, and they set up the screen. A one-handed grab is made by Kirby, and then he's grabbed by Govea and tackled at the 47. You wonder how long it's going. Good play there by Kurt Govea, but you wonder how long it's going to take the Redskins to fall into some sort of a defensive pattern. All right, granted they got Carl Banks, but Wilbur Marshall is gone. Eric Williams, a, a fine defensive tackle, he's gone. Charles Mann, their best defensive lineman, he's got knee surgery, he's gone. Uh, you've got to take up Jumpy Gathers, a guy who contributed mightily on the running game for the Redskins last year. He's gone. This is a this is a team that's missing a lot of good good people to play here last year. Third down and 12 at the 46 yard line, and Marino throws, and it's batted at the last moment by Alvoid Mays. And once again, good coverage in the secondary. What a throw though by Marino. <laughs> off the back foot. <laughs> that is still a beautiful throw. Oh, that is a superb play by Alloyd May. That ball was caught. May gets a hand in there. But what, uh, what was exposed there of McDuffie? One shoulder pad? That's about all that was showing over Mays, and the ball was right on that shoulder pad. Dale Hatcher to do the punting. It bounces at the 15 and then takes a great Miami hop to the side and Mike Williams downs it at the three. So the Redskins begin at the three with 4.32 to go in the half. Stars and Stripes, a Goodyear blimp based in Pompano Beach up the road providing the scenics as it looks down into Joe Robbie Stadium. Full house. Almost a full moon. And the Dolphins in control 14-3. Redskins start from the three-yard line. And Brian Mitchell picks up a couple. Dan was talking about the defensive injuries. The one thing we can report, Charles Mann did have arthroscopic surgery today in Alabama on his knee. And the report was very good. In fact, Charlie Casserly, their GM, told us before the game that Mann could actually be back conceivably in two weeks at Phoenix. If not, they then have another bye the following week, and he definitely expects him to play November 1st, which would be a Monday night game in Buffalo. And Alice question mark remains around Eric Williams, whether or not he is going to be able to come back at all. Yeah, he's got a knee and a hip, mm -hmm. and it's actually the hip that is the bigger long-term problem. Second and eight. And is the catch made inbounds? It is. Oh. Caught up at the 17-yard line by Ricky Sanders. Troy Vincent with the coverage. Yeah, that's a good call by Rod Dauer, the offensive coordinator. A lot of faith in that young quarterback. You're down deep in your own territory, shadow your goalpost. You run a deep out for the first down. You know you got a quarterback that's got a strong arm. Might have been a good call by Dauer, but I'm not so sure about the official on yeah. the sideline. Looks like... Yeah, well, he might have been dragging it. No, I mean, that, uh, left foot, obviously, on the uh, on the out-of-bounds line. Yep. Two years ago, that ball was uh, back at the five, and said it's a first down at the 15. Oh. And it's incomplete here. Reggie Brooks, for a moment, thought it was a backward pass. And I am not lamenting that it is where it is. Right. Let the game go on. Those right. things even out. Huh? No, I'll agree. I mean, I'm a, I was a huge proponent of replay, but I must say uh, it really hasn't come into a, to play that much in the last We haven't brought it up in the quarter, I don't think. One of the, Brooks that, has only got one reception coming into this game, and you might understand why there. 
First of all, he's only 5'7". <laughs> <laughs> that thing looked like it was hot. Should we read between the lines? <laughs> Is that a salty? <laughs> oh, please. I'm turning a deaf ear to that. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 15. Conklin's pass is caught by Reggie Brooks at the 20 yard line. A third and five upcoming now with 3.05 remaining in the first half. And Miami leading Washington 14 to 3. There's John offered all a guy a multiple Pro Bowl player for the Dolphins. They thought they lost him during the preseason. They thought he had a torn biceps that might keep him up for the entire year. And this guy's had oh. some nicks and bruises. He this plays too tough for his body, quite yeah. frankly. I, they thought they lost him after the Jets game with the shoulder. Yeah, I don't know that this guy's got a body part that hasn't been injured one way or another. Monk in motion on third and five. Conklin hangs in, throws, hits Monk, and he makes the catch up at the 27-yard line. So Art Monk, who's caught more balls than anybody in the history of the National Football League, just makes his 858th reception. And in case you haven't been counting, he has now made 109 of those on Monday Night Football. It's really amazing. I saw that stat today. I couldn't believe it. I, I know he's had some great Monday nights, but he loves the lights, doesn't he? superb athlete. He knew he was going to be relegated to a backup role this year. He came back in better shape than ever and has done a good job for him. And add another figure, too. That's 152 games in which he's caught a pass. Straight. Two-minute warning. Tom Olivadotti, the defensive coordinator here, used to take a lot of heat, but uh, took a lot of heat after the Jet game, and he was a big hero last week, and his defense playing very well tonight. Any way you look at it, though, guys, this is so much more of a physical defensive football team that Olivadotti has going for it. Mm -hmm. A marked improvement. First down from the 27, two minutes to go in the half. The catch is made by Ricky Sanders. <laughs> Flag is down up at the 44-yard line. That stops the clock with 154. That flag coming from deep in the secondary. Oftentimes, uh, that's right, it involves something to do with the tight end a lot of times. Illegal contact. That's what we want to know, too, Don. Yeah. We'll find out. What, this guy started coaching in this league when Dan Marino was, what, one, years, one year old? Mm -hmm. Seven years with Baltimore, <laughs> 24 with Miami. I don't like to think about it. I played with him when it was That's Cleveland. Right. Dan Marino was wearing a diaper when Don Shula started coaching in the NFL. Illegal contact, defense, number 56, five-yard penalty, first down. Offered all, and we have it isolated. Good conversation with Don Shula at halftime, and he looks back and also talks about what he's going to do. There's John Offered all, and as we said, it might be with the tight end. That's on Ron Middleton. And that is the responsibility of that official all the way back to monitor the tight end's release off the ball. And they're saying that took place beyond that five-yard zone. Conklin, deep drop on first down, goes to a secondary receiver. And it's Tim McGee in a short gain up to the 35-yard line. Big one in college football coming your way early, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. You've got number three Miami going to Tallahassee to take on the top-ranked Seminoles. Then second half of the doubleheader, you've got those games. Check your local listings for the game in your region. We'll call your cable operator for the pay-per-view option if you prefer to watch another game. Ryan Mitchell. And, uh, well, the Dolphins are giving them the skins all they want underneath, but now time is of the essence. Down to 107. And Conklin's saying, do you want me to call a timeout? Thing to say, Al, you can, they'll give you all those four and five yard shots you want to do. They're obviously trying to protect Compton. Well, trying uh, to keep him out of deep trouble. They come with the screen. That's a very high percentage thing. Well, look at this. I, they, they have all their they're no hurry to do anything. What, what are they saying about Conklin well, here? Griffin is saying, let's get it going, guys. They let's have, get it going. They have all of their time out. Yeah. What, what are they saying about Conklin's ability to run their offense? They're not even. They're not even attempting to get another score before halftime. Well, third down and four. And Mitchell, he's up to the 42, and that's going to be very close to a first down. Come on, call timeout. Now they did. Well, 
with I, 26 I, seconds. I think they're going to have a timeout. For, geez. Bizarre. 26 ticks left in the half. 26 seconds remaining in the first half in a bizarre sequence for the Redskins who had all of their timeouts and have let the clock down at 26 seconds. Then they take a timeout. The measurement was good for a first down. Now they're at their own 42-yard line. Don Shula visits with Frank at halftime as part of our Toyota halftime report as uh, the master who will probably this year surpass George Hallis in terms of total victories when you combine regular season and postseason wins. Conklin to Mitchell, you get a flag down. That's going to stop the clock. As soon as the clock operator sees the flag down with 17 seconds. Yeah, Richie playing it very conservative here at the end of the first half. Motion penalty against the Redskins, but taking the stance that, that the worst thing that can happen here is some type of a turnover, and he's not going to put Conklin in. Illegal motion. 83 offense five yard penalty remain first down. any sort of a position to to turn the ball over and give the Dolphins another chance if nothing else right. just throw a deep pass and hope yeah. for pass interference you're down by 11 points 14 to 3 and that's what I think yeah. we're going to see it's just a little late and the Redskins will get the ball when the second half commences and Conklin throwing into the prevent defense <laughs> and it's knocked down by Stephen Bragg at the 15-yard line. It was knocked down. Yeah. Uh, it should have been caught. <laughs> the ball hit Bragg's right in the chest. Well, I guess we'll get to watch that one more time. Mm -hmm. Russ Grimm mm -hmm. there on the right side. The, the Redskins fans remember him. The, had a great career playing guard for the Skins. One of the original Hogs. Super Bowl rings adorn his hand. He's now the tight ends coach for mm -hmm. the Redskins and understudying to Jim Hannafin, their wonderful offensive line coach. Art Monk. Pro that he is, he gets out and stops it with one second. With, with one second. Yeah. Well, let's see, he gets out at about see, the 42. Here they are at the 42, and they, it's like they didn't even try to get there. And they're almost in position to score at some point. Uh, well, you know, Chip <laughs> Lowmiller is one of the few guys who could make a, a 59 or a 60 and yard field goal, and here he comes. At best, is 56. But you wonder where they'd be if they yeah. really tried to get there, if they wouldn't have wasted all that time. The NFL record, of course, is Tom Dempsey's 63 in 1970. Last week, Steve Christie of Buffalo had a 59, a 59 yeah. yarder, and this one's going to be a 59 yard attempt. Yeah, he's so much better off the artificial surface than he is an after surface. This is heavy air down here, too. Oh, it's going to be close. Well, oh. Miller yeah. sends it down a little short. And that is the end of the first half. A little tougher at sea level. Yeah. <laughs> or below in the mist. 14 3 at the half. We'll return with halftime activities after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC station. How important is it for you uh, knowing that you're on the verge of becoming the winningest coach uh, in the history of this entire game? Well, that, that's uh, obviously a record I'd someday like to have. But I, I, I've never worried about numbers. You know, I never worried about 100 or 200 or 300. Uh, the important thing for me is this team and, and this game. And the numbers add up. But, uh, you know, that's, that's an honor that uh, someday I'd like to have. Lombardi, Chuck No, George Allen, uh, they're all gone now. Don Shula is still here. Uh, how do you stay motivated year in and year out? I just enjoy doing what I'm doing. I've been, I've been very fortunate. Um, I, I'm healthy. I've, I think I've only missed one practice in the entire uh, time that I've been a head coach. And uh, I've been with two organizations only, you know, the Colts and uh, now the Dolphins. And, uh, the, the people that own the football team have let me coach. I've been able to call the shots. and uh, uh, There aren't many coaches that have that opportunity, and uh, that's helped me. I've been able to win early in my career. That's helped me stay around, too. Don, is there one particular memory that stands out above all of us? Well, it had to be 17-0. and 0. Uh, You know, previous to 17-0, and 0, I had been in two other Super Bowls, and I was 0-2 and two in Super Bowls. And, that's something that you never like to be associated with, uh, not winning the big game. 
So we're 16 and 0, getting ready to play uh, to win 17 and 0 the Super Bowl, and and I had that tremendous feeling that you know if we if we're 16 and 1, it's a failure. Everything is a failure, and uh, fortunately we won, and that was certainly you know the, the game that meant the most to me. Done a lot of us were around during the tough times. Uh, then you lost Dorothy. Uh, uh, they were very difficult times for you, but all of a sudden you're a different person. Uh, uh, you seem uh, like you've got your life back together again. Well, I don't know how different I am. I, 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 I do uh, certainly miss uh, Dorothy, and uh, we had a great life together. Now I've met somebody new and special, and uh, we're enjoying our time together. Uh, and I think that, that life goes on. You appreciate uh, all of the opportunities and the good things that have happened, and then you look to uh, what's going to happen in the future. Any timetable about when you may call it a day and wrap it all up? I'd like to go out with a, with a Super Bowl win or uh, have the opportunity to at least play in another Super Bowl. Last year, we were one game away from the, sh the Super Bowl, got beat in the AFC Championship game, and that left a sour taste, uh, the, a thirst to want to get there again. And uh, so, you know, right now, I've got this year left on my contract. I got next year left on my contract. And uh, hopefully it'll get done in, in the next couple of years. And then I'll worry about what's going to happen after then. But I still enjoy very much doing what I'm doing. The Redskins 14 to 3 at halftime. Frank Gifford, along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. You know, I enjoyed talking with Don last night. I've known him so long, but he seems happier now than he has in many, many years. Well, he's a real freak of nature these he days is. because, I mean, it's it's such an all-consuming job. And I guess the uh, the over-under on when you hit the wall as a coach <laughs> seems to be about 10 years. We've seen a lot of them hit it. We barely talked about Joe Gibbs tonight, the Redskin coach, but it was 12 years, and I think health problems uh, were factored into his decision. And so many of these other guys uh, seem to call it a day. And here's Shulip, and seemingly ready to go on forever, Dan. And I think the irony is, was it, what, three or four years ago, everybody was talking about Chuck Knoll and Tom Landry and Don Shula having lost it, having lost it? Oh, I certainly can't say that about Don Shula. And, and uh, from, a, from a distance, when you look over the, the length of his career and what he's accomplished, I think more than anything else, what is stuck in my mind is his ability to adapt to his talent. You think of the undefeated Dolphins, a power running attack greasy maybe put the ball in the air a, a dozen or 15 times a game and yet here he gets his hands on dan marino totally jettisons his uh, his style his thinking of what won for him in the past and he uses the talent he has to win in a, in a new way and i think that's the mark of an outstanding coach who can do it over decades and he adapts to the youngsters who come into this game they're so different than when he started out and he's I'm in a perfect Brian situation Cox. here yeah. too yep yeah. he's sorry for me guy. though not to call him Mr. Shula. Uh, a lot of respect there. I played against him, and I call him Mr. <laughs> Shula. We'll be back. Second half coming up. A cold so we start the second half at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Terry Conklin and the Redskins will get the football. Trailing by 11. Pete Stoyanovich descended in the direction of Brian Mitchell. Dolphins coming into the game. Two and one. A win. And they tied with Buffalo for the top spot in the East. The Redskins, meanwhile, with a loss, would fall three back of the Eagles, two back of the Giants, and a game back of Dallas in the NFC East. Mitchell's going to take this one at the goal line. And with Orr leading the way, he runs it back out to the 34-yard line. Tackled by Pete Stoyanovich. And the first half numbers evened up a little bit after the first quarter, which was totally dominated by Miami. You notice, though, the Redskins only 23 yards rushing. And that's coming into tonight's game where they figured they had to win this game. Ball control pounding the ball and, and really stuffing it down the throat of the Dolphins. And in the first half, they just weren't able to do that. And I, if you look at those numbers, that's the biggest weakness on the behalf of the Redskins. Uh, certainly, you credit the, the Dolphin defense, who has been very physical on the line of scrimmage. That, Dan, I think the yeah. unwillingness to risk anything by Terry Conklin. You're going to have to risk if you're going to gain. Brian Mitchell. To the 39-yard line, a pickup of five. John Offerdahl makes the stop. Mitchell, very versatile, kick returner. 
running back. And when this season began, they were going to feature him. They moved Biner to a third down role and a fullback role. But as it turns out, it looks like Reggie Brooks is now the heir apparent. And Brian is back to being Mr. Versatile again. Reggie Brooks averaging six yards a pop coming into the night's game. 154 yards a couple of weeks ago. Just pull it up. You just got to have him in there. On second and five. Conklin buys time with a roll and then completes the pass into Miami territory. Ricky Sanders makes the catch at the 48-yard line of the Dolphins. He's tackled by Vincent, 13-yard gain. There is Brooks over on the Redskins sideline. Remember, we saw him hobble off in the first half, and Brian Mitchell is on the field. It has been many, many years since a Redskin back has had the explosiveness, the speed, and the game-breaking abilities that Reggie Brooks brings to the Redskin offense, and they're not the same when he's over there collecting dust. I wonder if that ankle's bothering him. He got rolled up on it. Oh, it has to be, or he'd be in there, I would think. Here's Mitchell. Brian Mitchell. Brian to the 45, it's a gain of three. Yeah, but he did come back and play after that, and uh, carried the ball. Maybe he just tightened up yeah. during the halftime. The Redskins, of course, have had their share of, of all-star big backs, you know, the John Riggins and the Gerald Riggs and the John, uh, the George Rogers and, and those types of individuals. But they just haven't had that that boom, that explosive speed. And now we've got Ron Middleton down on the field, the Redskin tight end, and their woes continue. Injury timeout. So after the injury timeout, Ron Middleton comes off. And the... Redskins resume at the 45-yard line, second down and seven, opening stages of the third quarter. Miami leading 14 to three. And Desmond Howard, the Heisman Trophy winner from two years ago, takes it, seeks the first down, and he's close to a first down. Lewis Oliver runs him out. Did he get the, did he get the whole 10 yards there? What do you think? If he did, it's not the only whole 10 yards. It uh, cost him about 21 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, how is that for a, a segue? Uh, it's a segue to Frank's uh, new book. How the sales going? The uh, whole 10 yards. I really don't know, but uh, it's kind of interesting. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> there it is. Covered 23 years of Monday Night Football. And yeah. A lot about the game. Not enough about Kathy, according to her. No, <laughs> a lot about your, uh, I read it, a lot yep. about your growing up, and uh, that's why I wanted to do it. Your formative years. The whole 10 yards. Your wonder bread here. <laughs> wonder kind. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. I like that serious yeah. look on your face on yeah. the cover there. That's that. Well, when you're an author, you don't have to look serious. Great lighting. You should put your hand on your chin. Mm. That's what authors always do. I did one always. like that, and they didn't want it. They didn't want it? Hey, while we're on the subject of reading matter, as Gary Lane tells motions. us about the illegal motion. Two-minute movement to snap offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. The cover story there in goes the, McGee the, current, uh, the cover story in the current Sports Illustrated on Boomer Esiason and uh, yeah. the situation with his son Gunner battling cystic fibrosis is must-reading. It's written by a, uh, a phenomenal writer by the name of Gary Smith who just turns out one incredible piece after another. But it is sensational. It is a, such a poignant story. And to see what Boomer's been doing. Not only having a great year, but he is working oh. so hard. First and 15 as Conklin throws and has that knocked down by Offerdahl. It's also an interesting look at Boomer's relationship with his father. Fantastic. It's a wonderful story. You're right, it is must reading. Tim McGee coming back yeah. in. We saw a moment ago Middleton go out. Get a report on him, but I don't know whether we covered it or not. We been telling you about all the injuries to the Redskins. Terry Orr did not suit up tonight. He has a chronic back, well, sore back. He had a broken bone in there, transfers process. So he didn't suit up tonight. And uh, a recap, Keith Jackson, the mm -hmm. all-pro tight end of the Dolphins, is sitting this one out as well with a bad hamstring. Middleton is back in the game. Tight end, second and 15. Conklin guns it to the 28-yard line, and Ricky Sanders makes the catch. Flag down, J.B. Brown with the tackle. No matter who this goes against, that ought to help Kerry Conklin. They let him go upfield in the middle about 15 yards, and he was right on target. It's just that when you're trailing 14-3 to three and you've got an inexperienced quarterback, you cannot afford mistakes. 
you just don't have very many that you get to have during a game. Offsetting. And here's one of them. Multiple fouls. Illegal use of the hands to the face, number 91. Illegal use of the hands to the face, number 64. Penalties offset. Replay second down. But chalk that one in the Miami win column. By about 17 a, yards. Yeah, a do-over hurts the Redskins. Take a look at the right side of our screen here. There's Jeff Cross, Mo Elowanibi. Ooh, and he, he does get it right. There's Cross's hand right up in the... They're both taking uh, turns, pushing each other in the face. That's a good look at what happens up front. Second and 15. Back at the 42-yard line. And Conklin throws into a lot of traffic and almost got it into McGee. Incomplete. Almost got it to oh, Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent <laughs> should have intercepted that. That was a poorly thrown ball. Bad judgment on the part of Compton. Vincent just sitting back there, keying in on it, just didn't handle it. Oh, he should have caught it, too. It just went right through his hands. Hmm. In fact, I think it's going through his hands, kind of put, uh, put McGee on edge a little bit. It, I think he thought that ball was going to be intercepted and, and heading the other way. He was already in pursuit. Meanwhile, Marco Coleman is being assisted back to the Dolphin locker room. On third and 15, Conklin goes down. Jeff Cross with the sack. Well, that's a coverage sack. Good coverage deep downfield. Seven DBs in on the nickel for Miami. Well played. And Terry Conklin, like Mark Rippon, is not one of your better athletes, dancing around and out of the pocket. Jeff Cross, who's led this team in sacks uh, a couple of years ago and turned that title over to Cox and Griggs and people like that, gets his second sack of the year, and the return of Jeff Cross to form would be a big uh, plus for the Dolphins. Here's Roby's punt. Fair catch called for at the 13-yard line by O.J. McDuffie. And that's where the Dolphins will get it. With 10.52 to go in the third, and Miami up by 11. 10.52 remaining. We're in the third quarter at Joe Robbie Stadium, and the Dolphins lead by 11 and have the ball at their own 13. Keith Jackson, the uh, tight end, if you join us late, inactive, hamstring pull. And Greg Beatty takes his spot, tight end right side here. As Marino and the Dolphins run their first offensive play of the half, and it's Kirby to the weak side. Up to the 28-yard line, a gain of 15 for the rookie. He was tackled by Darrell Green. Well, weak side in formation only. Not when you're coming behind Rich Richmond Webb, the left tackle, and Keith Sims, the left guard. That's the strong side from a talent standpoint on the Dolphins' offensive line. Strong blocking up front. You think Marino's yes, not sir. happy with that 1990 no. draft? Ooh. Yeah, both of those guys come in. Webb, first round. Sims in the second. They got Ulenek, their center, in 89. And a big addition is Ron Heller on the right side this year. And that's off the fingertips at the 39-yard line of the intended receiver, Irving Fryer. Right. But they're also a big reason, Webb and Sims, why Marino can look off three receivers before he comes back to the left side and delivers one. Ball Good just look a, at the ball just thrown a little off target. Yeah, just a little behind Fryer. Boy, you talk about a guy who gets up one morning, goes to work, and then gets up the next morning, and all of a sudden he's no, no longer New England. He's receiving passes from Dan Marino. Irving Fryer, I, I, he must pinch himself every day. Mm -hmm. Second and 10, 28-yard line, Marino. Incomplete and Fryer uh, and Ingram, the two new guys in the area, and the ball goes between them. The two marks, of course, as we mentioned, are gone with their over 1,000 receptions from Marino between them, 134 career touchdowns, and you come in with Irving Fryer and Mark Ingram, and you you don't seem to miss a beat. Well, Marino missed them both. There. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> cleanly. <laughs> That's true. Except on that play. <laughs> You trying to tell me Cooper would have been there, Clayton would have been there. No, I think he would have missed both of them with that pass, too. Amazing. 1,030 completions to the 
the Marx Brothers through the years. Third down and ten. And Marino swings one to the outside, and Tony Martin makes the catch and led to first down. Got position on Tom Carter, and the Dolphins keep the drive going. Carter, if you weren't with us earlier in the first quarter, beat Martin, beat Carter deep for a touchdown. And that time, Carter was giving Martin all the room he wanted, and he put a good little juke on him to the inside. Watch this, a little head fake to the inside, and Carter takes off as if he's going to be running that fly again. Martin breaks it to the sideline, and Marino had it on a string. And first down, here's Kirby, and there's nothing happening there. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Yard loss, Buck and Tim Johnson in on the tackle. Redskins tightening things down here in the second half. Miami able to move almost at will in the first quarter, and the Redskins might have had a, a, might have had a little lecture at halftime from Richie Pettibone. Fellows lost the uh, averages there for Martin. Comes into tonight's game averaging almost 23 yards of catch, and tonight averaging over 27. Lofty numbers for his team. Best night of his four-year career in terms of the yardage. And here's Beatty who makes a circus catch. And he's close to a first down as he gets into the Washington 49. Beatty is now mentioned a moment ago, filling in for the injured Keith Jackson. He's been around a lot. He's a good, steady workman like tight end. That's his third reception. I guess the fourth reception. Now it's the second of the night. But he fights it, stays with it. Of course, not getting hit by a red skin while he's chasing that ball. But boy, great look there by Greg Janoff, our director. Kenny Wolf, our producer tonight, as always, the best pictures in the business. And Greg Beatty, some of the best concentration in the business right there. Good work. Third down and one at the 49. And Kirby picks up the yard and more. First down at the 46 behind a Keith Sims block. You still have to wonder how a 6'1", 221-pound running back who had a, over 880 yards rushing at Virginia a year ago and caught 39 balls. How he sticks around until the third round. Because it's, it can only be because it's an imperfect science because there's more to it than how big and how fast and all the statistical things they can do to a guy. There's more to it than that to play this game. Of course, Reggie Brooks stayed around in the second yeah. round. At the 46-yard line, King Flips to the outside, nice move, and then he's tackled by Brad Edwards after a gain of about four. And you touched on something at halftime, too, and Don Shula adapts his game to the talent around him. And which he does is, it as good as anyone has ever done in this game. Which is unusual. So many coaches have such a firm belief in their system. My system is right. If you do what I say, it is the only way to do it. And, and, and some coaches have died when they didn't have the, the talent to match that system. But Shula, no, he, he, I mean, he sits down and says, what kind of players do I have and what can I do to enhance their abilities and make them better? Moreno out of the gun on second and six. And hits Kirby. Forward progress at the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and about three. This is what Kirby brings to the show. Uh, to a little better degree than Mark Higgs. He is a good receiver out of the backfield and a big target at 6-1 where Higgs is 5-7. Higgs could sometimes get lost coming out of that backfield while a Kirby doesn't. It's something the Dolphins have been looking for for a long time, that, that all-star back to carry the load. They were hoping they got one when they drafted Sammy Smith. That didn't work out. Then they swapped him for Bobby Humphrey. That didn't work out. Maybe Terry Kirby's the answer. Third down and three is Marino. Tries to convert, and the ball comes loose after he got it in momentarily to Mark Ingram, but he couldn't hold on. So this drive bogs down. And Hatcher comes in the puck. Ingram, of course, uh, unrestricted free agent from the Giants. Gave us a big thrill. Super Bowl 25. Remember that? Third down catch that kept the Giants winning drive alive in the third quarter. A uh, Spartan wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Did he overlap with Andre Risen? They must have been teammates to, together at Michigan State. Had to be pretty close. Hatcher sends that one into the end zone, and Washington gets a break. As it will come out to the 20. 5.55 left in the third. Miami still up by 11. 
those guys starts next week against the Giants. If Rippon on the right can't make it, and he's about 50-50, it's Conklin again. Looks like Rich Gannon's going to play a little bit for the Redskins. Yep. And How about this? Rich Gannon comes into the game at the 20-yard line as Reggie Brooks gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage. We talked to Richie Pettibone about this last night. And he said he, did, he didn't want to go to Gannon unless it just got to the point when, you know, hey, it was the only way to conceivably win the game. And obviously he has gotten to that point midway through the third quarter. I think we saw a lot of lack of confidence in Conklin at the end of the first half when they wouldn't try to get something happening. And they had plenty of time. And Gannon has, he's been a starter. He's eight and four as a starter from Minnesota. They got him in a trade. And he's been out there. Second and 11. And he throws. McGee is saying <laughs> nobody wants it. to rule. The official is saying he did. <laughs> yeah. well, and he's thought. the official that nobody was close to it. The, the, the nearest official was about 10 yards away, and, and nobody waved it off. He crapped it. It was so yeah. good, they ought to give it to him. <laughs> that was a great effort. He was a hook slide, and he came up with it. That's one of those deals. If nobody waves it off, they're going to give it to you. It's right. like no call. No call makes it a catch. I agree with you, Frank. Yeah. That was such a good oh, effort. Oh. It looks like a catch. Crowd scream, but it yeah. Looks, yeah, let him out here. Here's Gannon. That's the Graham other thing out. he can do. He moves around well out of the pocket. Gets a yard. Williams comes up to make the hit. 420 to go in the third. 14-3 Miami. Well, movement out of the pocket is relative. Let's go back and take a look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a catch. Heck, yeah. The crowd uh, overreacted here a little bit. Movement out of the pocket when you're talking about Redskins uh, and their quarterbacks is, is all relative. Rippon doesn't move very very well at all. Conklin's about the same. Uh, Gannon is the winner by default. Second and nine at the 36. Play clock is down to two. They just get it off. And McGee can't make the catch. And it will be third down. Well, last night we were talking about mobility with Richie Pettibone, and I started by asking him to compare Conklin's mobility to Rippins. He says it's a push. Then Dan says compare it to Joe Jacoby. <laughs> and Richie said it's a push. It's a push. And I said compare it to Jim Hannafin, his offensive line coach. And he said, no, Hanny, you take a vote. <laughs> Jim Hannafin just had his 60th birthday, and uh, Pettibone thinks he can scramble better than either Conklin uh, or Rip. Well, he still yeah. still demonstrates the block, right? Boy, I didn't want to tell that story. Why'd you make <laughs> Third and nine. And, and the Dolphins back to the 26. Yeah, and the Dolphins defensively scramble better than any of them. Flags down downfield. I think Mark Rippon, in his own subtle little way, is trying to say that's holding against the defense. And he's right. And this, on a third down, will be an automatic first down. That's J.B. Brown. Brown working against Sanders. Holding. Yep. Oh, Whoa. Defense. Number 37, five-yard yeah. penalty. That should be called first disrobing. Down. Yep. Right in front of the Redskins bench, and you saw the flag come in from the right. So there's a good break for Washington. This is so, so much more of a physical football team. When you're looking at the Dolphins and their playoff possibilities and what they might do in those playoffs, you got to like how they're a much stronger and tougher team. Gannon chased again. And he steps out of the 36 yard line. Hmm. Chuck Stuck. Klingbeil came flying in there and landed right on the back of Gannon's leg. It's kind of hard to slow down 295 pounds. Yeah, good point. Well, a good effort by Klingbeil being all the way over there. Yeah, he actually falls over his own guy, David Griggs, number 92. Gannon uh, wondering what's going on with that, but really Klingbeil, not a whole lot he could do. Reminds us of the play in Kansas City yesterday, Montana yeah. with a hamstring. And by the way, the latest on that is that in talking to the Chiefs, they still don't know if he'll practice tomorrow or if he'll play next week. Fans are going to have to hurry. 
Second down and 15. Gannon chased by Cross, tackled by Offerdo all up at the 41-yard line. You know what Gannon forgot when he was scrambling out of the pocket there like that? That that's where that new intentional grounding rule uh, comes into play. He could have just thrown the ball into the ground anywhere up by the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. and, uh, and got away with it. Instead, he took the sack, lost five, and again, for the second time this game, Ron Middleton is forced to the sidelines. You can see him holding that back. One of the difficult things for Gannon coming in, Terry Thompson has been taking most, if not all, of the snaps, working with the first team as they try to get him ready. So he's had very little work with his first unit. Jim Riggs replaces Middleton on the right side, and he has to pick up Brian Cox, and then Cox gets picked up by Ed Simmons. And the pass, right. the Dolphins are saying no, the officials are saying yes, McGee. And a big-time effort by Gannon. He got away from Brian Cox. Flag down. Flag down. But Gannon has sparked this Redskins team with his mobility. And look, always look for the offensive team and where they go when there's a flag. And you can see the Redskins didn't go anywhere. Their whole team stayed back there. They're moving west. Yeah. They're not going to waste any time. They knew it was against them. Gannon, first of all, got this playoff with one second left on the play clock. But look at that Illegal work on the sidelines by McGee. Offense. No end on the left end of the line. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Mm. Well, I tell you, those are mistakes yeah. that you just can't have. We've seen a lot of them tonight. Uncharacteristic of the Washington Redskins. When you're coming into a game wounded, you just can't afford errors. And you wonder if that didn't have something to do with Middleton coming out and Riggs coming in and resetting on the right side and leaving nobody on the left side. Good point. Yeah. Third down and 14. Gannon fires into a lot of traffic and even the great Art Monk can't handle that one. Surrounded by three Dolphins. Stephen Bragg for the primary coverage. Even that pass, Monk had a chance for it. Mm -hmm. Pretty good debut here tonight on the part of Rich Gannon. Monk had a play. He sure did. Yeah. Here's Reggie Roby averaging 46 and a half tonight. The league average thus far this season is 42.6. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no. Five. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 60 yards. Reggie Roby can't walk to the sidelines slow enough. <laughs> Take that, Fish fans. We see Tim Allen meets his obnoxious new neighbor. Who's got more power? Find out on Home Improvement. And then Brett Butler stars in the new hit comedy, Grace Under Fire, all Wednesday on ABC. Brett leaving her job as the uh, center fielder for the Dodgers. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Are we keeping you up? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a while since Miami has scored. They've been sitting on this 14 uh, point offensive uh, show for quite some time, and Dan Marino's offense has been dormant. At the four yard line, it's Terry Kirby. Well, uh, give, at the 24. give yeah. Pete Byers all the credit there. He tied up Carl Banks, and Banks looked like he was stuck to Byers with Velcro. I'm impressed <laughs> by Terry Kirby. I, I, it's rather obvious, too. Maybe he carries the ball in the wrong hands. The only thing I could, could say, but he reminds me a little bit of Jim Kick in the things that he can do. He doesn't have great speed, but he has a wonderful sense of where he is, not only running the football, but in the passing game. They are telling us now Marco Coleman, the defensive end for the Dolphins, who left earlier with a dislocated finger, now has a fractured left hand. And Kirby is shot there for a gain of one. The x ray is showing a fractured hand now for Marco Coleman. Kurt Gavea, the middle linebacker for us. Redskins, is playing tonight with a fractured hand. Because he's not as recently fractured as no, Marco's. But I would suspect that Marco, after it grows on him, he'll be back. Oh, yeah. Well, Miami plays at <laughs> Cleveland next Cleveland. Sunday. Then they have a, a week off before hosting the Colts on the 24th. 
get that cast on your hand, you can start clubbing people with it. Second and nine, Marino incomplete intended for Kirby. Kirby is contending he was held up at the line. Thanks, coverage. Third down. But Rick Hamilton came on a blitz up the middle there for the Redskins, and uh, somebody gave him a kiss. Very dangerous <laughs> against Dan Marino. Knocked his jersey off. 11 <laughs> seconds remaining in the third quarter. Dolphins scoring on their first two possessions tonight. Went out in front 14-0. Lowell Miller added a field goal. And that's where we are. 14-3. Third and nine. Four receivers. Marino on the shotgun. And the blitz again. And Marino, ooh, it was, was it caught? It was caught, fumbled, and recovered by Mark Ingram. But not enough for a first down. Up at the 32-yard line. So Hatcher will punt, and he will do that when the fourth quarter begins. Ingram was reading the blitz with Marino. However, he just didn't take it deep enough, and the flag is down. He just didn't take it deep enough for the yardage for the first down. They picked up the blitz. Ingram just realizing that he was short of the first down, trying to get up in a hurry and make something happen. It is the end of the That's third quarter, and we will uh, wait here for the moment. Line judge Ron Baines threw the flag. Gary Lane will uh, explain it. Well, the Redskins uh, certainly, you would assume, will decline the penalty and force Miami into a punting situation. Daryl Green, considering the options, they'll sort it out, switch sides. I think this flag may have come after the, the play was over. Preliminary unsportsmanlike. Yeah. As yeah. long as it ends up being a punt by yeah. Miami. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 on the offense. We're going to extend the quarter and punt. Four Damn. Ten. Ooh. Marino. And, and yeah, that's that's the ruling here to avoid a situation where a team could benefit yes. from having the penalty called on them and then let's say in a, in a windy stadium have it turned around and then get the punt with the wind at their backs as an example and the penalty is not one if because it came after the play was over it's a dead ball foul so the penalty it's not one that you decline it's assessed so it's fourth down and they lost 15 yards on the deal mm -hmm. so at the 17 yard line Desmond Howard and Darrell Green drop back Dale Hatcher to punt. Redskins try to set up a return. Hatcher gets off a beauty. Let's field it at the 33. And Howard gets the green up past the 40 to oh. 50. Flags are down. Green with a gorgeous run back for penalty marker. Who was it that said that? Daryl Green, had he not been such a good defensive back, might have been one of the league's all-time great punt returners. I think the first one he ever returned as a rookie in a preseason game, he went all the way for a touchdown. And he did that in the playoffs one year. Good return man. And the Redskins uh, pulled off a similar thing last year, not on a handoff, but sending two men back, and that's when Desmond Howard scored his uh, first NFL touchdown. Illegal block in the back on the return team, number 24, 10 yard penalty, first down. That is the end of the. Pat Eilers. Okay, that's the end of the third quarter. It's still Miami 14, Washington 3. We'll return with the fourth quarter of Monday Night Football after this from our ABC station. attraction on Saturday that's the early game Miami Florida State it's a young rivalry but a great one and then those games as the second half of the doubleheader pay-per-view option available check with your cable operator we start the fourth quarter Al Michaels Frank Differ, Dan Deer in Miami Redskins on first and ten Gannon's going deep flag is thrown 
J.B. Brown roughing up Tim McGee and drew the flag. Gary Lane, who was very busy at the end of the third quarter, begins the fourth quarter in similar fashion. If it is J.B., he's the guy that got called for a defensive holding on the last mm -hmm. Redskins series. Oh, he was... He was juked pretty good by McGee on that move to the inside. He's getting down though, Dan, a little better that time. Yeah. Hardly as obvious. Well, I don't. I think he was too far away to get a real good grip. Pass interference. <laughs> Defense number 37. Spot foul. First down. Was, if if I could, Dan and Al, I'd just like to send all of our condolences to the family of Al Sabato, longtime NFL official, worked the first Super Bowl. We've had him on many games, mm -hmm. Al. I know you know him and Dan. Very well, and, uh, passed away this past Friday and. From all of us at ABC, uh, to his family and friends, mm. our condolences. Real good man. Yep. From the 45-yard line, Reggie Brooks, up to the 49-yard line. So Reggie's back in the game. And let's take a look at the numbers through the first 45 minutes of competition. We added these to our halftime numbers. There was a scoreless third quarter and the Miami Dolphins continue their dominance and again let's zero in on that rushing yardage by the Redskins only 45 yards that is just awesome work by the Dolphin defense shutting down one of the better running attacks in the game second and six and that's too far for Reggie Brooks to handle you know while we're taking care of business uh, on behalf of all of us here working on our crew, let's uh, wish a speedy recovery to uh, Billy Edwards, our sideline coordinator who had emergency surgery last week in Baltimore, still in the hospital. And uh, Billy, we're all uh, we're all thinking about you. I know you're not watching the game tonight. Uh, they won't let you have a TV in your room yet, but uh, don't count it. Your son's count taping it. it. Yeah, your son's <laughs> taping it for you and going to show it to you as soon as they'll let you. We're yeah. we're all pulling for you, pal. Let him go, Billy. And we miss you very much. And we love you. Third down and seven at the 49-yard line. Monk in motion. Gannon in relief of Conklin. Oh. Throws and nice toe dance by McGee to make the catch, pick up the first down at the 41. If yeah, you are a Miami Dolphin fan, Frank, wouldn't you be a little uneasy right now having mm -hmm. just been, been sitting on this 11-point lead for this amount of time knowing that you, that's not that much in the NFL. I'd be a little nervous. They might be wondering where Washington got Rich yeah. Gannon. Jack Ken Cook, the owner of the team, looking through the specs, and Charlie Casterly, the GM. Brian Mitchell in as the running back. He gets the ball, juggled it for a moment, takes and it to the 37, flag down deep in the secondary. Well, the Dolphins had 12 men on the field. Tell you one thing that won't Craig, set well with yeah. Angula. Yeah, Craig VC, the defensive lineman, was sprinting for the sidelines, but he didn't make it. He was about four to five yards from the sidelines. They had a last-minute substitution, and he didn't make it. Here he is coming right at us here at the bottom of the screen. Watch when the ball snapped. Right there, 12 men on the field. In this era of. Defense, five-yard penalty, first down. In this era of situational substitution, I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often than it does. Players come and go in bunches. Stars and strikes, a good year blip. Providing that scenic. First and five at the 36-yard line. Middleton back in the game, he's in motion. They run a reverse, they give it to Desmond Howard, Gannon out in front of the block for him, and Howard picks up the first oh. down and then gets whisked off. <laughs> what a block by Gannon. Gannon's a good athlete. We talked about his ability when he came into the game to move around in the pocket. He had some great runs when he was a starter for Minnesota. From that time, he got out in front of that and threw a terrific block. And here's the handoff to Howard. Gannon's looking for somebody. He's not looking to get out of the way. He finds somebody, too, and down goes Troy Vincent. And right up comes Troy Vincent, makes well, the tackle. That's that's a good. Good. You're right, it was a heck of a block and a heck of a play by Vincent to get back up and make the stick. 27-yard line, Gannon. 
Buys time off the fake. Brown oh. is holding. That's a good way to get Coughlin back in the game. Offerdahl with the pop. What a hit. Ray Brown has lost his helmet. Now he gets it back. It's just tough business. <laughs> John Offerdahl. <laughs> That's not the first time he ever laid a tattoo on somebody. Hey, they are <laughs> such a better team. I mean, they are our different team when he's not in the lineup. Look at that neck brace. He, he brings wears. something very special to that position. That's a that's a real neck brace. Brian Cox wears one like that. that. Oh, that's that's a good hit. He took a little tattooing himself on. Yeah, that he play. did. He, well, John's never not one to come out on scarred. What'd you get right? He goes by the slogan that you see now in every NFL locker room: "See what you hit." Yeah, and they're trying to. Get the players to be conscious of not hitting with the crown of that helmet. Look at those. It's a good idea. Brown, Brown, you can Brown sell out. advertising on the back of those neck braces. Brown out, Jacoby in, and Mitchell takes the ball down to the 16-yard line, and that's close to a first down as the Redskins, all of a sudden, down by 11, mount their best drive, and Brown with the attention on the sideline. Now you talk about see what you hit. Right. Of course, Chuck Cecil has been fined $30,000 for for a couple of hits that didn't draw flags against the Redskins. The, and it uh, doesn't matter anymore. Phoenix they City. review yeah. them all in New York and Bill Pullian charge of the group now. That's one of the major things they consider. Here's Mitchell and on the subject of fines. Of course, number 51 there for the Dolphins, Brian Cox, who's been uh, pretty quiet this week, but emotional, can charge a team up. And you know what he did last week? His uh, Brian Cox's, I guess, what do you call it? Sign language salute to the, um, the Buffalo fans cost him ten thousand dollars well he he waves day and here goes ron middleton who's just trying his darndest to keep playing in this ball game obviously hurting in and out but it was a uh, one-man war that brian cox declared on not just the buffalo bills but the entire city the region their fans uh, he spared no one second and six gannon throws yeah. into the end zone caught by sanders now, I mentioned about the Dolphins being nervous with just that 11-point lead. That 11-point lead is about to become a four-point lead. Rich Gannon has started for much of last year with Minnesota in an 8-4 record before he was set down. One of the reasons he didn't sit too well up there was his, he just always was taken off with the football. He's a terrific athlete. He puts a lot of pressure on. He could have run that practically into the end zone. He read it as being open and fired a great shot. Low Miller for the point after. Sanders meanwhile who was uh, according to Pettibone last night doubtful for tonight's game has caught four for 52 yards and a touchdown. And with 11.08 left in regulation it's 14 to 10 Miami. Ricky Sanders and uh, his mates getting some oxygen on the sideline. Meanwhile, the man of the moment for the Skins, Rich Gannon, led him on the touchdown drive. It's funny, Miami scored twice quickly tonight, couldn't deliver the knockout punch. Skins have hung in, trailed by four. Lomeler sends it down to the goal line. The rookie O.J. McDuffie out of Penn State brings it back down to the 23. With 10.57 remaining in the fourth quarter so here comes marino with miami leading washington 14 to 10. oh yeah college football i, I think uh, of that great line by our esteemed colleague keith jackson describing that florida state miami rivalry it's, it's a rivalry that's not old enough to have grown whiskers <laughs> but a great one nonetheless <laughs> Keep it up, Al. We we'll, we'll might get to do that game. <laughs> <laughs> At the 23, the pass is incomplete intended right. for Kirby. It's Bob Greasy's favorite game. Yep. Talking to Bob down on the field before the game, Bob said, hey, what more could I ask for? Number one versus number three, and I can get home right after the game. <laughs> Still makes his home here in Miami mm. and home on Saturday night. Mm. Well, there's a reminder of Bob Greasy's Hall of Fame career with the Dolphins. Nick Bonacani also yeah. here tonight. His son, Mark, and tomorrow night they have their big dinner for the Miami Project up in New York to fight against spinal cord injuries. 
They've done a great job. Miami second and ten at the 23. Marino. And he hits Irving Fryer. Up at the 43-yard line, Brad Edwards makes the tackle. So Boy. Marino hitting Fryer on what is a, a very key drive now for Miami. Hey, Dan touched on something a while ago. Irving Fryer, he must have been absolutely thrilled when he caught, took that first pass from Dan Marino and struggling through the tough years up in New England. He's a great receiver. Number one pick in the draft 10 years ago. And he is finally with a great quarterback. In an animated conversation with Shula for the moment is Kirby like the huge hole. Yeah, Irving, uh, welcome to Miami, but I'm not sure you should put your arm around the head coach yet. <laughs> I'm not sure your relationship with Don Shula has grown whiskers yet. <laughs> not sure. I... <laughs> just get it. Yeah. yeah. Now, Don, if yeah, you just up. put me in now and uh, yeah, listen no. up, Don. Come on, Irving. Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, Maybe, uh, Paul Warfield. It took him ten years to get to that point, huh? <laughs> and then they traded him. Kirby got 11 first down at the Skins 47-yard line. Kirby again tries the other side. And a flag thrown at the end of the play as he gets to the 43. And he'll come back. And another look at a strong move by young Terry Kirby. Playing tonight with a full muscle in his cap. Miami offense number 69 10-yard penalty remain first down the Dolphins have never lost a game to a team from the NFC East ever that includes the Orange Bowl since the merger in 1970 the Dolphins of course one of the uh, not original AFL teams but they came in as an AFL expansion team the beginning of 1970 11-0 against teams from the yeah. AFC in this town they did lose to Washington what at 89 game that Washington dominated. I think it was 89. You mean in Washington? In Washington. This is uh, Keith Byers. Who's out of bounds at the 46-yard line. And they've never lost to an NFC team, the Dolphins, in this stadium. The stadium opened in 1987. And of course, they've played two Super Bowls uh, against Washington. And they're one and one in those games. They beat Washington to cap that 17 and 0 season. That's the uh, famous uh, Garo Yepremian Bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he tossed one up. Mike Bass, I guess, ran it back for a yep. touchdown. That was Washington's only score in that ball game. Then the Skins beat him, and the uh, the play that we'll all remember is the Riggins run, fourth and one, and John yeah. Riggins takes it to the left and scoots 40 some yards for the touchdown. Meanwhile, Higgs can't go anywhere, and it's going to set up third and long. Speak of the Super Bowl and Don Shula's desire to get back there. Nobody wants it more than Dan Marino. It came so easy to him in his sophomore year. The 49ers beat them in Super Bowl 19. Almost seemed, I'm sure, to Dan he'd be going back there every year. Just hasn't quite worked out that way. Now here he is in his 11th year with a good shot at going back with this team. But a young 11th year. He just turned 32 last month. Third and eight at the 46-yard line. He's chased, he escapes, throws against the grain. It's complete big first down, Mark Ingram. <laughs> that is not easy. First of all, he doesn't run all that athletically. The throwing back, off balance. Ingram also giving him a good target. He looks back, sees him in trouble, angles to the sidelines, trying to help him, and he does, and he gets the first down. At the 22, seven and a half to go, fourth quarter. Miami up 14 to 10. Terry Kirby to the 22-yard line. Monty Coleman, 15th year, Central Arkansas. Makes the tackle. He just keeps rolling along. Speaking of rolling along, we'll roll along to Buffalo next Monday night. Oilers, Bills. What home, Dan? It's 
Brian Cox has certainly taken the heat off of us, hasn't he? Off of whom? <laughs> I agree oh, with you, what you oh, said about Brian I see, Cox earlier. Uh, <laughs> are we distancing ourselves here, Al? Well, <laughs> just because Frank and I are staying in a different hotel. <laughs> One with a view. <laughs> Second and ten. Where? Cur Kirby to the 19-yard line. <laughs> see. Well, you know, the those of you wonder what's going on, Brian was a little harsh on the Buffalo uh, a little harsh on the Buffalo fans, and, and and they have taken exception to things that we've said in the past, unjustly so, I, I might add, but nonetheless, Brian, I think there's not enough venom left in Buffalo to go beyond what they feel for Brian Cox. What you're saying is he really got them off your back. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Third down and nine at the 19-yard line. And a catch made by McDuffie, who squirts to the 10. He's got the first down. Another football player, the number one pick out of Penn State. What a superb move to get the first down. O.J. must have been reading all the things they've been saying about him as Don Shula's kickoff return and punt return guy and really not going to be a major contributor as a receiver. There's Kirby showing his blocking abilities and Really manhandles Monty Coleman, keeping him away from his quarterback. And McDuffie, not a guy that people were counting on as a receiver, again contributes. And a brilliant Marino-led drive exactly when Miami needed it, exactly when Washington didn't need it. Kirby. The momentum of the game had swung completely to Washington. They had scored, and they stopped Miami quickly and gotten it back. Who knows? But Marino, when he needs it, delivers this drive starting at their own 22 and they're already down to the 10 yard line to the frustration of Pettibone. Kind of what they did to Buffalo too. They just kept the football all day up there. They had almost 40 minutes of possession against Buffalo and this drive is not only has moved from the 22 yard line but it's consumed a lot of time. Their own 22. 445 to go. Miami up by four. Second and nine. Moreno throws almost, but incomplete. Greg Beatty had it for a split second. Couldn't hang on. Moreno did everything but catch that ball for Beatty. In between two defenders, he put it right on the hands. Beatty, whom we saw fight another one earlier, filling in for Keith Jackson, and I just couldn't handle it. This is perfectly thrown. I'd like to have a neurologist test Dan Marino because he has to have different nerve endings than a normal human being when he makes a decision to throw the football his motor skills go into motion quicker than a normal human being when he says I'm going to throw it to this guy and then he throws it look at that he jams it into the wide open McDuffie but there's a flag down at the eight yard line is it possible to go from a resting position to delivering the football quicker than Marino does. And Dan, watch out. You've already got one on sportsmanlike conduct for your language with an official. I, I And this one's coming yeah. back. You can see him begin the illegal motion or shift goal. Sin, number 82, five-yard penalty, remain third down. Mark Ingram. Hope to see it. Also, he is such a competitor, Dan Marino. But you touched on it earlier, yeah. Danny. He has such confidence in his own ability. Well, it's a physical thing, too. Look at him with the ball resting. And then that slow motion, he, it's such a compact motion. that it, it, it's, it's not a wind-up. It's, it's like not a, a Yeah, fire. it's exactly. It's not a step back. It's just, there it goes. Nobody has ever released a football quicker than Marino. Third and 14 now at the 15. Penalty negating. The would-be touchdown to McDuffie, and Moreno escapes the first time, but not the second, and he is sacked by Sterling Palmer, the Florida State rookie. Well, give the credit to the secondary of the Redskins. Good coverage. Moreno, no place to put the ball, and they are celebrating. Well, that's a, that is a wonderful turn of events for the Redskins. A touchdown now becomes a field goal attempt by Stoyanovich. And if they make it, the Redskins That's, can still get back into yep. it with a tie with a touchdown and a conversion. That touchdown would have pretty much driven a stake into the heart of the Redskins. 
This is going to be a 37-yard attempt. And Stoyanovich, one of the best in the league. Dan Marino guiding the Dolphins on a march that culminates with a field goal. Would have been a touchdown were it not for the penalty on Ingram. It is 17 to 10 Miami. Stoyanovic to send it down to the skins. Mitchell, Howard, and Irvin for all deep for Washington. You don't see three deep very often anymore. They want Mitchell to handle it. And that is Bryant from three yards in. And a big run back for the Redskins. That's why they want him to handle it. All the way into Miami territory. Buddy, flag is down back at the 14-yard line. It's coming back. Oh, the Redskins just oh. won't stop shooting themselves all over the place. Penalty after penalty, miscue after miscue. Holding on the return team, number 24. Oh, well, that's Eilers again. Up the distance mm. to the goal line. First down. Eilers is the player that got called on the uh, on the reverse earlier. And that was about a 30-yard pickup that yep. was negated. Oh, that hurt. And he just got a piece of, of Daryl Malone on the way down. How's this for a sizable difference in field position? Uh, huh? Malone could have made a play on that thing. All the way back to the seven-yard line. Ball is at the seven. The Skins have all of their timeouts left, plus the two-minute warning. 3.43 left in regulation. And they begin with Brooks. And Brooks, close to a first, and 11-yard pickup. Let's take another look now at the penalty. Here's the holding call on Eilers on the run back. He's right there on the 30-yard line. And that's what gets the call. He's got his hands out. He's riding Malone. Malone could have made that play if he hadn't to. That was a good call. Skins of the game team, Rich Cannon in relief of Conklin. He's going to give it to Mitchell again. So they begin this drive with two runs. Minimal game, second and nine. Larry Webster in on the hit. And the Redskins now elect to take their first that is their first charge team timeout. 2.57 left in regulation. Second and nine when we come back. In the history of the Miami Dolphins, and they were born in 1966 as an AFL expansion team, they are 72 and 1, either at the Orange Bowl or here, when leading by more than 10 going into the fourth, and that was the case tonight. The only loss was to the Jets here in 89. And let me tell you what a lot of that is. It has to do with having to come down here in November and December when it's hot and you don't even break a sweat practicing back home. That's, uh, the weatherman is a big helper here in Miami. Oh, and there's a, a near huge sack. Instead, Gannon flips it away. Oh, oh. And instead of it being third down at about 25, at least it's third and nine. Brian Cox just about had him wrapped up. And the athleticism of Gannon saved what could have been a cruncher for the Redskins. That was inside the five-yard line. He was able to... Keep on his feet under the new rule. He can throw that thing away as long as it's towards the line of scrimmage. Cox thought he had him wrapped up. Gannon really rolled that way, rolled right into the upfield rush by Cox, and I don't know how he got away. A pretty vital third and nine right here. And the catch is, is it made? Oh, there's a flag, or dropped the flag. He must, I don't know if he went out and came back in. McGee, line judge drops a flag, side judge comes over. J.B. Brown with a coverage. He ruled the catch no good, which he went out. He might have gone out. Receiver number 85 went out of bounds, yeah. came in and caught the ball, lost it down previous spot. Now it's fourth and nine. Yeah.
He's right out of bounds right there. Now he comes back. He is no longer of the course, receiver. Of course, McGee has no idea that his foot slid out of bounds. A wonderful job of officiating. And look at this. The Redskins go into punt formation. Well, they have to figure yep. they're deep in their own territory, at least if they can stop the Dolphins. Yep. They've got the two-minute warning and two timeouts defensively. That's a good decision. Oh, I, Unless they, they really take it here. They've done that in the past with Brian Mitchell. He's the up-back. Tough place to do it, especially when yep. you need nine yards. Here's Roby. You get, and the way he's kicking, let him kick. Fair catch. McDuffie makes that at the 33-yard line. Now all you'd have to do is stop Marino. So they can stop the clock twice, plus the uh, two-minute warning with 2.31 to go. And the Dolphins are looking at it in terms of a first down. Now a first down on the first play doesn't do much for you, but yep. if they can run a couple plays, burn a couple Washington timeouts, then, then crank a first down, then you have really hurt the Redskins. Who yeah. better would you have doing it than number 13? Well, really the guy you'd like to do it right here is number 43. I think I'd like to do this on the ground. At the 33-yard line. And they give it instead to Byers. They line Byers up with Kirby. Good-looking play. Yeah, real good. Yeah. He's, it's the first time they've run it tonight. It's the first time they've lined up that way tonight. And Byers uh, with a nice little game here. Close to five. And Washington compelled to spend a timeout. Second down and uh, long five, short six. Which is it? Well, we're going to go with a short six here. We're going to go. Play. Yeah. Fires covering up that football. That's the last thing they say when they break the huddle, too. Covered up. Washington will be tackling the football all the way. Ball at the 37 yard line. Kirby. Well, he, uh, I think he picked up about a long five there up to the 42-yard uh, line. He's a little short of the first down, but the Skins have to spend another time out. The Miami Dolphins have the ball just across the 40-yard line. It's going to be third and a short three. At the 43-yard uh, line, and Terry Kirby tonight, the third-round rookie, third-round choice out of Virginia, 99 yards and 15 carries. Yeah, what, four or five receptions to go with the 14 he had coming in? Third and three, and they can just about wrap up the game if they can pick up the first down, but they can't because Monty Coleman is there to make a big play. He's been doing that for 15 years. That's going to force a punt. The clock will stop at the two-minute warning, and Washington will get one last chance. And they'll have to go down the field without a timeout. Two-minute warning. Perfect look here at Monty Coleman there at the upper portion of your screen. Watch him drive upfield through the shoulder of Keith Byers. And right into Terry Kirby, the running back, and drop him for a big loss. Monty's done his job. Now we have to see if Rich Cannon and the Redskin offense can pull a rabbit out of a hat. That's what they're looking at. Less than two minutes and no timeout. Dale Hatcher to boot it. And it's fumbled and recovered by Mitchell, looking for a big run back. And instead, he just has to settle for a recovery at the 29. So they have to go 71 yards in a minute and 50 with nary a timeout. You hit it right on the head to Al. Mitchell was looking for a big return, maybe lost it for just a moment, taking a quick glance upfield, eyes off the ball, ordinarily sure-handed. He loses it. And the Redskins have got to go a long way with no T.O.s. 150 to play, Miami 17 or Washington 10. Gannon 
Throws it underneath to Mitchell. He's up to the 36-yard line. He's tackled by Jeff Cross. Seven DBs for Miami. One defensive lineman. Second and two. Three-man rush. Monk makes the catch. Forward progress sets him the first down. Vincent makes the tackle. But he kept him inbounds, and the clock keeps on ticking. 118 and going down. The vulnerability of this defense is right down the middle. You get big yardage down the middle, but that clock will continue to run. And Gannon will stop it the only way he can right now by grounding it. Second down and 10 with 110. And Gannon, you know, here's a guy who uh, goes to training camp with another team, comes in as insurance, doesn't take very many snaps. And he's put in a position right now to try to get the Redskins not only a tie, but pretty much back into the NFC East race at this point. He's done a fine job since he replaced Conklin. Second and ten. And a terrible Goodbye. pass. And it's Vincent who picks it off. He's going to run the clock a little bit. <laughs> and he's tackled at the 45-yard line. Art Monk. Stopping them, and again, there's a, a case of talking about, you know, how much of the offense do you know? The, the coordination with your receivers. One, the receiver goes one way, the pass goes the other, and that's the end of the ball game. Well, uh, congratulations to Don Shula and the Dolphins. They moved now to three and one, and and they've made believers out of people who wondered if they could follow up one good performance like they had last week in Buffalo with another good performance back home against a strong team like the Redskins. And granted, the Redskins are nicked, but a good show of intensity by the Miami Dolphins tonight. That's, I saw, think they've answered a few critics. You saw that look on Richie Pettibone's face. They go one and three, the Redskins. Oh. Philadelphia, what, four and oh, the Giants three and one, Dallas two and two. They have a lot of work ahead of them. Well, of course, the Redskins, without their starting quarterback, I'm sure will be the first to say, let's see how Philadelphia does now without their starting quarterback for a while. Mm -hmm. But this, the last time we saw the Washington Redskins was on Labor Day night when they were dismantling the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, this team we're looking at tonight does not bear much resemblance to that team we saw play the Dallas Cowboys. Beat up football team. No question about that. Yep. One more kneel down will end it. New fashion statement there by Brian Cox. <laughs> Never go to Buffalo without your helmet, Brian. <laughs> well, we'll be in Buffalo next week. Bills and the Oilers. That's an intriguing matchup, is it not? Yes, it is. Looking a forward to it. To that playoff game. The Miami Dolphins have just gone to three and one. They are tied with Buffalo for the top spot in the AFC East, and they have a victory over the Bills in hand. The Skins, meanwhile, have dropped three straight and go to one and three. And our final score from Joe Robbie Stadium, the Miami Dolphins 17, the Washington Redskins 10. Until next Monday, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff saying good night from Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football has been brought to you